As I stand here, I am humbled to be with the representative speaker for the graduating class of 2016. And as I look out on this sea of expectant faces, now I truly understand why Peter Pan didn't want to grow up. Because growing up means being honest about who you are and where you are. The hardest part about growing up is letting go of what you have been accustomed to and moving on to not only what we want to do, but also to what we need to do. But if we're honest with ourselves, who wants to sink back into the comfort of being Peter Pan? Because life is calling to us with new possibilities as well as new challenges. But before that celebratory walk, I want to share with you three short, lesson-worthy moments I have experienced on my journey here at MSU. Back in 2012, as a new freshman, I, like most of the members of this graduating class, first arrived on campus with all of my belongings packed up from home, heading out towards an unknown future. Now, I can't speak for my classmates like Nick, Michael, or Andrew, who began that journey with me, but I can tell you I was scared of the unknown road that was before us, and I simply didn't have a clue what I was doing. I only knew that like Michael Jackson and Diana Ross's song from The Wiz, I had to put my left fork before the right and just ease on, ease on, ease on down the road. And so my journey began. Like many of us, I was finally thrilled to have the independence that I so craved in high school. But for me, that thrill quickly came to an end when I came down with the flu midway through the semester. I felt awful as I tried to continue juggle class, homework, and taking care of myself. It was the first time I was dealing with life as a quasi-adult. And at that point, I realized that with independence also comes increased responsibility. So I was grateful when some of my friends stepped in and helped me making sure I was getting sufficient rest instead of doing even more to strain myself. And like the Scarecrow and Dorothy and their journey to find the Wizard of Oz, I learned that traveling down the road of life is harsh when taken alone. Having friends and loved ones to accompany you on your path allows us to focus not only on the destination, but also helps to make the journey memorable. So to my parents, Rick and Carla, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for providing me with the love, support, and tools I would need to become an educated man. And to my friends, thank you for everything you did to cheer me on to the finish line. This brings me to my second reflective moment. As my academic journey continued, I came to understand how constructive criticism can be a valuable tool for getting better results, especially if that criticism is given and accepted properly. I realized how one can take criticism and transform it into a learning experience. It was back in the spring of 2014 when I enrolled in Dr. Lola B. Smith's business communication course, a core class for all business students. From the first day, it was very clear that Dr. Smith had high expectations for each of us, and those expe expectations were nearly always coupled with a great deal of faith that each one of us had the ability to be the best that we could be that we could always grow and become so much more. As part of this course, we were separated into groups of five to six people to create a final written and oral presentation on a subject that our team felt we had a connection to. But the project also had to be about something that really mattered in terms of our business futures. My group agreed upon the topic of higher education. But rather than performing our presentation live for the class, we opted to do the presentation as a video, which was an okay choice in delivery methods, since technology is transforming the way we conduct business. So, in doing it as a video wasn't the problem. The problem was the reason why we chose that format in the first place. The truth is, we had chosen that design because it seemed like an easy way out, since few of us felt comfortable speaking in front of our class. So instead of trying to find some innovative way to use technology to make our product stronger, we just sat there like bumps on a log and filmed the whole thing intact. Needless to say, it didn't meet Dr. Smith's expectations for us. She looked us straight in the eyes and said, 
Your research on the state of higher education is excellent, and you can get a relatively decent grade on the project as is. But if you truly believe education is like a cloth to wipe away the fog of ignorance, then help your audience clearly see your passion for the pursuit of such knowledge. Don't let your presentation just lie there like some kind of inert gas full of passivity and lifelessness. Have the courage to step outside your comfort zone. Redo the work. Present it again. Let us catch a glimpse of your passion for knowledge. Needless to say, we redid the work, rising to the challenge, and this time, it surpassed Dr. Smith's expectations. More importantly, it surpassed our own. So Dr. Lola, I thank you for your passion to help push us outside our comfort zones because I'm not sure if I hadn't taken that initial criticism from you back then and the spirit it was given, if I could have stood here before all of you to deliver this message without fainting dead away. And so now I come to my third realization moment. It's about today, May 14th, 2016. In putting together this speech, I realized that on this life journey, the challenge each of us faces is learning to join the old, our parents, our teachers, and our institution, to new experiences, those just ahead, and to have the courage to experiment until we found our own voices. So in terms of our class and finding our futures, let's get real about it. Some may already have a job lined up to begin working after commencement. And for those who do, like Hillary Sloan, who is moving on down the road to Prestonsburg as a health administrator, congratulations. But for those of you who haven't yet, I empathize. Because like some of you, I'm still out there navigating this new terrain. And I can honestly tell you, I've already had rejection emails from job interviews because for one reason or another, companies ended up choosing other candidates. And that's okay, since I remain undeterred, optimistic, and hopeful, because I've come to understand that initial rejection is frequently a part of life, but what really matters is how you react to that situation. Success isn't about being perfect on the first, second, or even third try. Getting it right the first time is not the end all, whether it happens in a presentation, an interview, or anywhere else. It's about constantly learning how to navigate the rocky roads, learning from others, and trying harder next time. So remember, that diploma you'll soon hold in your hands is just your learner's permit for the roads ahead and the woods you may wander into. And so on your journey, don't forget to also take along the advice from one of my favorite people, Ellen DeGeneres, who once said, follow your passion, stay true to yourself, never follow someone else's path, unless you're in the woods and you're lost and you see a path, then by all means you should follow that. <laughs> and I offer one final piece of advice to my fellow travelers. As you cross that stage to shake Dr. Andrew's hand, bring to mind the first line of that iconic 60s rock song, Fly Like an Eagle. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Because it does. But then after you shake Dr. Andrew's hand, don't ever forget to fly like an MSU eagle and let your spirit carry you wherever your goals take you and then just ease on, ease on, ease on down the road. Thanks.